Hey guys, B8KD here. I'm doing a beginner's guide on PKing. This will be fitting and rigging, what ships to use, basically everything you need to know to get started from scratch. Um, so first off, I will be using a Condor 2. It is a frigate missile ship. Um, just because my skills are all into small missiles and frigates. But if we go into the market here, you do have choices on your PK ship. If we go ships, frigates, and we scroll down, what we're going to want is a interceptor. You can see on the top left the Condor 2. You can go with a slasher 2 which is for small cannons. An Executioner 2, which is for small lasers. And a Atron, which is for small railguns. So depending what you have your skills into, you're going to pick up your Interceptor, and then we'll move on. Now, once you have your ship, of course, purchase uh, whatever weapons suits you best. What I am going to do is um, go with a small, a Mark V small missile launcher. This is a pretty basic and cheap setup. They run about uh, 10k a pop, so very, uh, very cheap. We're going to open up our inventory, go into fittings, and we're going to start fitting our ship. So, we're going to go ahead and pop our small missile launchers on here. We're going to see our DPS go up to 84 damage per second. We are going to come down to our mid slot, which... Um, this is going to be a must, guys. This will be the most expensive item that you own on this ship. I purchased a Mark V Warp Disruptor. You can also do the Mark III, but they are the same price. Um, you can see these guys run about 14 mil. So this is probably uh, your most prized possession on your ship. I need a webifier in the second web mid slot here, which I will uh, fit on there in a second. Our low slot, we are going to do a Mark V shield booster. This boosts uh, your shield by 69, so that's a good number to uh, refer to right now. So I'm going to fit that. And you are going to want a Mark V small afterburner. This is a must on a frigate. Um, this is the only way you'll really survive. It's by speed tanking is what we call it. So you are going to be going so fast um, that people won't be able to hit you, hopefully. Or uh, missiles won't do as much damage to you when they do hit you. And you see everything is dirt cheap. 20k. We're going to go ahead and fit that on there too. We are going to go down to our rig slot. And essentially, I picked up, um, let's go check them out, just the free 30 day login rewards uh, rigs. A heating catalyst, 7.5%. Shield boost amount by 12%, so that will help keep our uh, shield ticks a little bit higher and keep us in the battle longer. I'm also going to do a capacitor uh, multiplier by 10%, so we don't run out of capacitor, which I don't imagine we will. And for my last one, I'm just going to open this right up. And we'll just pick one out together. Open supply box. Open. Now we have a choice. Flight velocity adjustment, 6%. Inertia modifier, which is always nice, but 
Uh, our missiles are going to be kind of longer range, so we don't need that. Warp speed increase, don't need that because we don't need to warp faster and cargo hold. So I think our best bet will be the 6% velocity adjustment. And that'll just make us go slightly faster. We are going to move that to our ship and we are going to start rigging it out. I'm going to click on rigs again. Going to put our damage on there. We are going to put our 12% shield boost on the other slot. Coming over to the mechanical rigs, we're going to slot our velocity and our semiconductor memory cell. Let me just see if there is a webifier really quick because we definitely do need that. Good, they have one for 200K. I'm gonna purchase that. Completely ripped off, but what the heck, I don't feel like flying around. And they know that, so let's go back into our fittings. And let's fit that stasis webifier. There we go. We have a fully functional PvP ship ready to launch. Now, if you do have the money, it's definitely worth investing in a little bit better items like this interruptive stasis webifier it goes for 4.5 mil but you see the optimal range at the bottom is 13 kilometers versus the stasis webifier is at 11 what I like to do is I orbit at 12 kilometers and uh, they can't web me and I can web them so eventually this will be a huge upgrade even something else like the navy one um, is pretty big now if we scroll down we can see our warp disruptor on here these warp disruptors uh, have a warp jamming strength of one so if they do not have warp stability mods on their ship and you activate this on them they cannot warp away it has an optimal range that you can activate it at 22 kilometers um, so this is a must like I was saying you have to have one of these if you want to go fight some PVEers the next upgrade I would recommend is a interruptive warp disruptor this has a jamming strength of 2 so if they have a plus one mod or something, this will help uh, keep PV ears where they are. These run for about 24 mil, and they have a slightly longer range at 26 kilometers. For DPS, um, I would go into whatever your favorite weapon is. Mine are the missile launchers, and look at the mission reward ones like the gallows you'll see this has a much higher DPS with the same missile range um, but these don't go for that much money so 400k I would definitely invest in something like this even the Kaldari Navy 1.1 mil Republic Fleet 1.2 mil eventually work your way down to something like this six mil and you will be doing a ton of dps for sustain you can go to your low slot look at your shield booster and i have a basic mark 5 shield booster which is fairly cheap same thing go to the settler here 1.4 mil goes from 69 a tick to 81 which is pretty big uh, with that mop, that rig we put on there as well. 
So now, um, if we back out here, let's let's undock and just uh, check a few things out. So first up, let's stack our missiles, get everything organized how we would like it. I think I will go like this. Now let's check our velocity when we activate our booster. Okay, that is great, 1400 milliseconds, meters a second. So that's uh, great for speed tanking just about anything. If we open up our fittings one more time and we check our missile launchers, since I have uh, a few uh, skills, our missile range is at 22 kilometers. What I would like to do is orbit at around 20 or if I wanted to go in close, I could orbit at 10 or 11. But just to be safe, I'm going to orbit at 20, two less than my maximum range, and I'm going to lob my missiles at somebody. The warp disruptor is also at 22, so 20 uh, optimal range uh, will be good for the ship. Now, skill-wise, um, I'm going to go through just a few skills you can uh, focus on for your frigate. First off, you are going to choose laser, railgun, candle, and missiles, whatever you want there. Um, I have quite a few points in small missiles torpedoes here, so you probably won't be doing as much damage as I am. But what you want to focus on is small missiles torpedoes there. You want to get that to level 3 or 4. Scroll down to small missile torpedo upgrade. You want to get that to 3 or 4. And then start focusing on your advanced skills. I would get those to 3 or 4 as well. Well, advanced uh, small missile torpedo upgrade. These give pretty... Uh, heavy damage boost you'll see at four level four there it's eight percent damage six percent small torpedo explosion radius ballistic control system plus one i do have one of those just in case uh, we decide to use that going to electronics um i would definitely do frigate engineering because you need to increase the power grid slightly and it will keep your uh, capacitor a uh, little bit higher so you won't run out of capacitor as fast. Electronic system, this one's pretty big for a frigate. Um, I would just get electronic warfare to three or four for now. You'll see this gives a uh, negative to your capacitor need for status, stasis webifiers and warp disruptors, which we both have equipped right now. Targeting, uh, you definitely need your targeting slightly higher. I would get this to at least three, maybe four, and move on from there. But I, I would probably only recommend three or four for now. If we go to our maintenance technology, uh, shield operation is huge. This will reduce the activation time and the capacitor need for your shield operations. Um, I would take this to four and then go into your advanced skills as soon as possible. Um, being able to tank a destroyer and or a cruiser is going to be pretty tough. But uh, with my skills as they are, I, th I think I should be able to do it. Defensive upgrades. Um, again, huge. I would get defensive upgrades to four immediately. Um, this one doesn't give too much, plus 50. Our, um, our advanced skills is really where it's at. If you get this to level 3 or 4, you see a 20% increase in your shield and armor and structure. Cruising technology. Um, Frigate Command is going to give you a boost in your velocity inertia modifier, helping you to orbit 
your ships faster. Um, I would at least get that to four. And navigation, you see afterburner here. This is huge. We have one of these equipped as well. Um, our afterburden will have a reduced capacitor need, activation time, and velocity bonus. This will keep us in the fight much longer. Um, so I would go four on here and at least two or three on the advanced just to get that extra six percent there, six or nine percent. So once you have your skills set up, um, it's just about time to start uh, PKing. Um, you'll see our ship does have a fairly low defensive rating at only 1800. Um, you'll see once you get to armor and structure, it's about a little bit more in half of uh, the whole ship's defense. So at 681, you want to constantly be recharging your shield, just nonstop. You want to keep it as full as possible. Um, once you get down to armor, I'd say yeah, I would consider warping out, get your warp uh, button ready, and uh, be cautious. With all of these interceptor frigates, you'll see the stasis webifier and warp disruptor need is at negative 80% as a roll bonus, so that's huge. Afterburner uh, velocity bonus, when you train that to 4 or 5, you see you get 10% per level. Same thing with frigate command bonus, you actually get a 12% um, small missile torpedo damage. So let's actually go back in there really quick. Forget command bonus here. So forget command. Um, I have this at five, so I have what a fifty-eight percent damage increase, along with a twenty-five percent increased velocity and negative twenty-five percent inertia modifier, which is a uh, huge. So definitely take that in com into command while training your skills. Now, we have gone over how to fit your Condor, or whatever ship you chose, and it is time to decide where we want to PK. So I'm going to open up our world map here. In the area, we do see a few point three, point four areas. Um, I think you can only attack people in a 0 0.4 or lower, but I don't think I want to go to any of these spots. Um, there's not many. Well, I guess we could for heaven's sake, but... So when I'm looking for a place, I want to look for the most areas that are 0 0.3 and under. I think the point fours only give tier fours or tier three anomalies, so not, not many people are going to be there. I'm going to go back one to New Eden. We see a lot of these dots are green, orange, or red. And you can kind of zoom in more. You see on the outskirts to the left is uh, orange, to the right is green. So there's not many places to PK around here. So let's see, where do we want to PK? We can check out this one, Molden Heath. Yeah, that looks like a good area. That's a point one, point zero, maybe a little dangerous. So I do have a spot set up already. Um, it is 19 jumps away. It's one of my favorite places to PK. It's over towards the uh, Verge vendor here. I'm going to go ahead and just set this as my destination. I'm going to press my little dot, and we are going to start routing there. Once we arrive... Um, I will be back in a minute here and I'll show you how to pick the location and what to do next.
All right, we arrived in our first location. Now, this place looks halfway decent. If you go to New Eden here, a way you can find a location, like I was saying, is look for the orange dots there. You can click on Essence here and view the region map. There's quite a few of point uh, three locations, point four. Um, I would look for the point three and under, I'd say. But if you go back, we can just do it again over in Genesis here. If you click on that, go to region map, you see there are quite a few areas over here. This place would be a great place to PK. Tons of very close low security systems. Um, so if we don't find anybody here, maybe I'll warp over to this area and check them out. If I set the destination, yeah, only 18 jumps away there. So I'm going to end that. Now we are in Lowe's. This is a point three security system. So if we exit out of this, we can open up our UI and we can go down to either mining spots, which we'll check those out. I can't warp jam ventures because they have a plus two warp stability uh, passive. So this plus one definitely will not work, but we can try to uh, two or three hit some venture trainers for their uh, mark three to five miners. But what we are focusing on today is actual PVE um, uh, fights. So these people will be fighting these PVE anomalies. Now you'll see there's a couple... Um, level two small anomalies we probably don't even want to check the two the one or this two or that one so we only have a few places to check here um, what i typically do um, people do not warp right at zero onto anomalies because the uh, the rats in the anomaly will be right on top of you they typically always go about 20 25 to 30 kilometers out I'm going to set this one for 25 so the rats can't really hit me too good. And it will put me right in range of finding that pve -er. Once I find a pve -er, I will immediately lock onto him. I will uh, approach him, enable my warp disruptor at around 22 kilometers, set my orbit to 20, and then I'll start letting loose on him. So let's go in at 25 and see if we can find anybody. Now, sometimes I will change this to celestial bodies and minimize it just for a quick escape if I need to, and that'll be explained in a minute. And it looks like we found somebody. Lock him, warp disrupt him. I'm going to orbit him. Let's say at 20 there, and I will unleash my missiles Oop, and do my uh, thruster bonus. Oops. So I'm going to orbit him a little bit closer. Looks like he's trying to get away. But essentially you orbit at a fast speed and shoot your small missile launchers at him. He is warped jammed, so he cannot warp away. And you slowly just take this guy out. Now, you notice the rats are very close to you, so they will be attacking you. I'll usually align so I keep moving. Find his capsule if I can see it, and I will pop his capsule. It's always nice to send them back to their station so they don't have to warp around. So we have to be very careful. You see the rats are attacking us, but let's go loot this guy really quick. A small energy Nosferatu. Now I will immediately go to a celestial body at 100 kilometers and warp away. 
This is going to be a PK or safe haven. Now, once we're safe, I will typically just shoot out into the distance, enable my thruster, and wait. We will check our first kill as a noob, a Korax trainer. Not bad. He didn't drop much loot. He had a few things. Uh, small, small, small. Wouldn't have been much loot, to be honest, but uh, you have got your first BK, my friend. So we scroll down, and what we got is a 70k PK. Not too bad for your first one. Now, the reason why we went to this Cosmic Anomaly, just whatever one you want, is you have a 8 minute, well, 10 minute crime timer. If we read through this crime timer, um, the reason for getting this is we actively attack the police or another pilot's pod so essentially I killed somebody and it gave me a 10 minute timer the consequence can be attacked freely by other pilots so anybody can attack you you show up as a red dot on their mini map will be attacked by sentry guns in low security space will be attacked by Concord in high security space cannot use warp drives in high security space so what this means is if I go to a Stargate or a station, I will get shot out of the sky. You can warp in at about 100 kilometers, but for some reason the gate gun will just like one shot a frigate. So never warp there until your 7 minute and 30 second crime timer has expired. Now, what we could do is we could go find more people to kill and it would reset our timer to 10 minutes. Or if you're low on armor or getting down to your hull, I would wait this out, take your loot back to the station, and uh, repeat. So we just check this medium. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go at about 25 here. And you see we warped in on that last guy at the perfect range. So I was able to warp disrupt him before he was able to warp away. I don't see anything else in the system here other than these two mediums, which I'll kind of mark that one. Nope, I don't see anybody here, so I'm gonna immediately warp to 25 of the next one. Want to be careful of those rats, they will do some damage to your frigate without your afterburner on. Yep, looks like nobody else is here. I could check a few mining spots. MK uh, Lowe's 3 there. I'm going to warp into a mining spot at 0 kilometers. That's right at the entrance of the... Uh, the mining spot here, the mining cluster. Now we can potentially catch somebody AFK or two hit a venture trainer. Now we got this guy here. We'll immediately lock on to him and lob our missiles. He is a venture three, so he is going to warp away. Yep. He was uh, not AFK, and you see how easily he got away. Really, the only way to get those Venture 3s um, is if you have three warp disruptors and you're very quick. So I'm going to, just for heaven's sake, check the other two clusters here in the asteroid belt. Okay, and nobody's home. Let's go to our next cluster. Typically, once you hit one of these, all the miners, they talk to each other or they'll yell on the local chat, hey, there's a guy here killing everybody, and that's when you need to be careful. Um, you'd want to go to your celestial body, teleport, and uh, and just get safe. Get, get rid of your crime timer, and then I would go to the next area. 
So let's go to our last asteroid belt to check for any remaining uh, people to kill. Yep, and there's nobody here. So I will go to my celestial body and wait it out. Sometimes I'll go to the sun there and uh, admire the sights. And I'll just go to IV. I will thrust her out and I will wait for my crime timer to expire. My combat timer here, this will um, essentially indicate that we have a one minute before we can log out of the game. If you exit out now, you will still remain in space and somebody could potentially find you and kill you. But going out into space with a thruster, they will not be able to catch you. Now, just to recap, when we warp into an anomaly, we want to orbit a few kilometers from your max distance there. Engage your afterburner for the velocity bonus. Um, warp disrupt them and just start lobbing your missiles off the interruptive uh, webifier um, can be very useful because you can orbit at 13 kilometers and lob your your missiles or whatever you need off and it will slow them and your uh, missiles will do more damage because they are slower and the explosion radius will go off right in their face um, with this build, I think somebody would web me at the same time and it will kind of negate the effect. And they'll be able to hit me potentially and get right on top of me. So yeah, um, we're going to get a few more uh, kills in this build. I'm going to wait for this timer and I'll see you in the next area. Alright, we are in our next area. Uh, Metal Man. It's a 0.3 security area. Should be pretty good. So let's go to our cosmic anomalies. We do not have a crime timer, so if you need to, go dock and uh, store your PK gear you just got and sell it. Once we get our crime timer, we cannot return to the base until um, that crime timer has expired. So my first one on the list here, I'm going to go ahead and do our medium at about 25, so we're a little bit off of the rats. The next one, I will probably do this medium, just so they don't get mixed up on my anomaly list. I'll go small, 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 medium, 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 large, large, large. It's a little bit easier to keep track of. So nobody's here, so the next one I'm going to warp to 27, let's say, and I will mark my next warp. So highlight it on the screen there, and I'm heading in dirty. Doesn't look like there's anyone here. Let's warp in at 25, 27. Now, if you are new to PKing, um, I would always, when you warp, go to your celestial body too and minimize it just so you have an easy warp off uh, escape. So, it looks like we found somebody. Lock him, warp disrupt him, and orbit him. I'm going to go 18 this time so I don't lose uh, the orbit. I'm going to afterburner and start lobbing my missiles off. This guy looks like a little bit harder target here, but we are going to attempt him. Looks like he's also getting attacked by the Vexer, which is good. He's going to help us out. And our missiles are completely shredding them. Now have your small shield ready to go just in case there's a burst of damage. Which there doesn't look like there is. Now 
Now he is plus one warp jammed with no stability, so he cannot warp away. And probably one more. Oh, we got him. Let's try to get his pod now. That's always fun. I'll warp jam his pod and approach it so it gets closer to the loot. And I'll kill his pod just, just to be nice. Send him back to his uh, home base. We'll go ahead and loot. And halfway decent uh, loot there. And let's go ahead and get out of here quick. We are getting hammered. I'll engage my shield just to be safe. And I will turn it off while I'm warping because I am full and I don't want to drain my capacitor. And we are officially safe. I'll shoot off into the atmosphere here. And afterburner. And let's check our uh, official second kill. Exxon U prototype. Oh, this isn't too bad of a PK. We, uh, yeah, about 20, 30k for those. Mark three, reactive shield, stasis webifier. Looks like he's been killing some miners, so it's good we got him out of the area. Let's check his miners here. Yeah, about 30k a pop. He sell pretty quick, so. All right, cool. Let's uh, let's go back to our anomaly list here. I think what we did was a medium, so let's go to this medium. I might have got them mixed up, so let's just get ready to check the larges. I do have a 8 minute and 19 second crime timer on our debuff list, so I definitely do not want to go to a station currently. Yep, this is where we killed them at. Because I will get gunned down in one shot. So be very vigilant of your crime timer, and if you actually warp in, you're pretty much dead. So, Not seeing anybody there. We'll go in at 30 kilometers. And nobody home, so I'll immediately get ready so the rats don't shoot at me. Now that guy probably scared away all the miners, but we will uh, potentially check uh, the mining spots in the area. AFK check a few miners while we're waiting. It's always fun. We may or may not get a venture kill. But uh, it's always fun trying. Sometimes you'll get a Mark V uh, miner. Sometimes some other loot. Yeah, it's pretty decent. It's three or four hundred k a miner, so it's definitely worth checking these asteroid belts, with or without uh, the needed warp stability or uh, the warp jammer strength. Probably just check IX here just for the video. Yeah, it looks like he cleared all the miners out. Oop, cannot warp. I did a little too prematurely. Now I do have a 5 minute and 50 second crime timer. So if I attack a miner, I will get that full 10 minutes again. So if you're looking for just PVEers, I would skip the... Uh, the mining belts. They can pose to be profitable, but it's just off of pure luck you can catch somebody. Yeah, nobody here. So definitely not going to a station or a stargate. I'm 
go into my safe haven. Let's just go to the bright sun here and admire the view until our uh, murdering noob crime timer goes away. I always like uh, warping through space. Looks pretty cool. Ah, that's a pretty nice one. Look at that. Just a giant ball of fire. Wonder if I fly into it, if it will burn me up. Whew, just got hotter. I'm good. But all right, I'm going to include a few more clips of me killing people at the end of this. Um, yeah. Looks like we found another Condor 2 here. This one might get a little bit dicey, but let's go zooming in. Might need to web this guy to hit him. All right, we webbed him. He webified me as well. These condors are so uh, quick that it's hard to even hit them. But it seems like we're doing some damage on him. Might have uh, small torpedoes equipped. He's shooting kind of quick, but we shall see. Looks like he is slightly panicking. Our capacitor level is stable with everything equipped. But we definitely needed to webify this guy. Uh-oh. He's a smart condor. Let's go eight. He is trying to escape now. And we got him webbed again. So I'm just trying to stay within the web range. Oh, he approached the Vexer on accident there. And he is out of the game. Well, let's try to get his pod and be nice and send him back, uh, send him back home. I'll open up my loot tab. And let's go loot them. You can also go through all of those loots. Oh. So we are getting attacked. So we want to engage our shield. Immediately go to Celestial Body and warp out. We could have stayed there and collected his loot, but I'd rather not tank the uh, rats. This one seemed like a fairly good PK. We will open up his log here. Yep, he had Kaldari Navy torpedoes. He may have watched my video and was like, wow, those are shooting crazy fast. But he made the mistake of... Uh, being webbed that's one of the bit major things with these small torpedoes here you can get webbed very easily so that pulls in a extra 300k let's check the rest of his loot Oop, not his capsule there i 
I saw a Nosferatu. The Stasis Web Fire is about 80k. And this rolls in about four to five hundred K there. So that will definitely all the PK we did will pay for our first upgrade, which I would recommend uh, would be the missile launchers. So remember uh, going to missile launchers here and I would pick up a set of gallows. Sell your loot, pick up two of these babies and get back out there. These run about one point two mil each so you can't really afford those yet but uh, you can definitely uh, move up there eventually now I am gonna check a couple more anomalies here just while I'm out and I have my crime timer but uh, if I don't find anybody, we'll wait this uh, crime timer back, and uh, that'll probably be it. You are a official PKer now. Congratulations. You have graduated the noob school of PKing in pretty much um, cheap gear. All you really needed to afford at first was your uh, 15 mil warp disruptor, and you are set to go. So we found a Caracal Trainer. This will be a good test of our skills. He has the Vexor on him. Let's target him, warp disrupt him, and shoot some missiles at him. So I would get my cosmic, or uh, my celestial body ready to go here. We are taking some damage, it looks like, from his drone which I can probably focus fire and get rid of that. I'm going to activate my shield booster immediately because we are taking quite a bit of damage. So I saw his little drone flying around, and that's what was doing quite a bit of damage to me. We took that drone out. Now we will focus fire on our Caracal. I disabled my shield booster because we don't really need it. I'll activate it really quick there, just for a quick boost. And we will slowly try to take this guy out. Looks like he has the Vexor on him as well, which is good. Activate my shield booster again. What we're doing is watching our capacitor so it doesn't drop to zero and they lose the warp disruptor. It will turn off at zero percent there. So I'm passively increasing my capacitor with my shield nut on. This is going to be a long fight here, but we are still chugging away. Disable that. Now with this guy, we probably don't want to get in range for our web of fire because his missiles will uh, tear us apart pretty much. Bliss Fulgrim. So this guy was the condor we killed. Um, he is back with his Caracal trainer, it looks like. So you always want to be careful. He had his Caracal trainer docked one station over, just waiting for us, pretty much. You see our debuff list. He has a Nosferatu on us, but we are out of range for that, so it's not really draining much of anything. But slowly but steadily, we're taking out a Caracal Trainer in a budget Condor 2.
Now be sure to disable your shield booster once your shield is full because uh, sometimes you'll accidentally leave it on and uh, pretty much it will drain your capacitor down to zero. Even if your shield's full it will keep on uh, ticking on you. When you activate a shield booster it does drain more capacitor than just leaving it on but I like turning it on and off just because it will give me that quick little boost up to about 100%. Disable it and let my capacitor recharge. I'll orbit this guy a little bit closer, about 16 now, just so he doesn't go out of range of my, uh, my warp jammer here. Get my shield back up. Turn it off. And just one more hit and we have successfully taken out a cruiser. He is gone. Now let's not kill his pod this time. Let's go loot. And I'm going to turn on my shield booster because that Vexer, that rat's attacking us. Alright, we actually got a really good PK here, guys. We looted that immediately. Let's go to a celestial body at 100 kilometers. Make sure everything's nice and full. And we'll check out this Caracal trainer he came back with. We got some medium missiles here. It wasn't very much. Okay. Uh, Web of Fire 80k. Medium MK5 Nosferatu. This is a big ticket item. One mil in the bag, guys. With our budget PK setup, we have PK'd official bank. He had uh, some mods on him. Looks like they're all the freebies. And last one we'll look at is the Afterburn, about 100k. Yeah, maybe a 1.2 mil PK there, guys. Congratulations. Looks like we found a venture here. We are going to AFK check him at 20 kilometers. At about 24, I'm going to lock him. And right at 20, we are going to shoot him. I will go ahead and web him. Oof. One hit away, guys. We were that close from getting him. So if he was one second longer AFK, um, we would have killed a venture. Probably had some juicy loot on him. But our crime timer sits at 6 minutes and 36 seconds. A weapons timer. Cannot dock at stations. Can't use stargates. This is more so for a uh, null sec. Um, you can't get killed at stations and stargates and null sec. But... Um, they won't allow you to dock. These ones uh, will just wait our six minutes. If we go to a station, we will get killed. So we will go to our celestial body and wait it out. All right, guys. Well, I hope this video was helpful. I hope this will get more PKers out there. Um, I tried to be as descriptive as possible. I know some of these things are known to some players, but I wanted to do a complete noob's guide um, from scratch. Um, 
one thing to take into consideration the ships I'm uh, modeling are uh, tier six ships um, when we go into our market again um, you have to be tech level six um, in order to fly these these interceptors here <clears throat> tech level six takes almost no time at all so most people have already experienced the game and now they want to PK um, so you can go down if you really just want to get out there and try to PK you can do a Condor slasher execute your Atron these are tech level 2 but you have quite a bit of less options um, you really just have to catch somebody that you uh, that you don't know what they're doing and you can potentially kill them or before they kill you um, but I would I just recommend get tech level 6 before doing any tour to Picane um, you can purchase a warp disruptor um, with essentially real money you can purchase a hundred plex will pretty much pay for your whole PK ship um, which costs around 1 to 2 mil plus the 15 mil warp disruptor but if you go in here and see 100 plex is equal to about 20 mil so that will purchase your whole PK trip um, most people will be able to farm the money so if you have a cruiser or a destroyer and you can go out and do uh, missions I would recommend doing it that way so you don't have to pump real money into this game. Um, essentially you just go into encounters and you see 1.5 mil for that one but some people can't do that. Um, but just pumping out these 90k uh, ISK reward missions can be uh, pretty profitable. Probably take a couple days to earn around 20 mil I'd say just refreshing and getting the easy ones but uh, that's all I have for you guys um, if there's anything I missed feel free to comment and ask I'll uh, reply as soon as possible um, but yeah I'll see you on the next video guys peace out alright guys well I hope this video was helpful I hope this will get more PKers out there. Um, I tried to be as descriptive as possible. I know some of these things are known to some players, but I wanted to do a complete noob's guide um, from scratch. Um, one thing to take into consideration, the ships I'm uh, modeling are uh, tier 6 ships. Um, when we go into our market again, um, you have to be tech level 6 um, in order to fly these. These interceptors here, <clears throat> tech level 6 takes almost no time at all. So most people have already experienced the game and now they want to PK. Um, so you can go down if you really just want to get out there and try to PK you can do a Condor slasher execute your Atron these are tech level 2 but you have quite a bit of less options um, you really just have to catch somebody that you uh, that you don't know what they're doing and you can potentially kill them or before they kill you um, but I would I just recommend get tech level 6 before doing any tour to Picane. Um, you can purchase a warp disruptor um, with essentially real money. You can purchase 100 plex. will pretty much pay for your whole PK ship, um, which costs around 1 to 2 mil plus the 15 mil warp disruptor. But if you go in here and see 100 plex is equal to about 20 mil. So that will purchase your whole PK trip. Um, most people will be able to farm the money. So if you have a cruiser or a destroyer and you can go out and do uh, missions, 
I would recommend doing it that way so you don't have to pump real money into this game. Um, essentially you just go into encounters and you see 1.5 mil for that one but some people can't do that. Um, but just pumping out these 90k uh, ISK reward missions can be uh, pretty profitable. Probably take a couple days to earn around 20 mil I'd say just refreshing and getting the easy ones but uh, that's all I have for you guys um, if there's anything I missed feel free to comment and ask I'll uh, reply as soon as possible um, but yeah I'll see you on the next video guys peace out